Hi, good afternoon. It's Sunday um, the 12th, but I'm doing day 13 of Vlogmas today. So you've just had the upload put on the web on YouTube just now for day 12. Busy filming day today. I'm still going to do my body clubs yet, which I think I'll do tomorrow. Right, so day 13 advent. Sorry about the light, but we're starting to lose light already. It's just after three in the afternoon. But we have a mini bat called Marjoram. So you can just about make out the greens in there. They're very, very soft greens, not deep, rich greens. And it is a blend with grey Shetland. And it's got a bamboo viscose blend. So you've got lots inside here. You've got little peaches and reds. Oh, there's a bit, there's a bit of grass in mine. A little bit of grass. Um, peaches and reds and there's Angelina in this let me just get my piece of paper and just double check right so Grey Shetland Bamboo Tussa Silk Viscose and Angelina with Sari Silk so you've got little pops of colour it'll make a lovely Tweedy Tweedy style yarn like the Time did uh, but with these greys in there you've got really muted subtle colours there's hints of bright olive green there's reds there's all sorts in there, especially from the Sari Silk. But yes, it's a really pretty one. I think I'm just going to spin this as a single ply. I might spin it up, ply it, but with a thread. But we'll see how it I go. Um, and I'm just going to go from here and start pulling it apart into sections, which is just so much easier to do that. I suppose I could spin it straight from the back, which I might do another day, actually, because I haven't done a giant roll lag in ages. But what I will do, I'm going to spin it woolen. So I am going to roll it up into little tubes. I'm going to draft it out a little bit. So the fibres all cross over. I remember we did that video the other week there about the differences in um, worsted and woolen weight um, spinning. So I am literally just going to pull them sections, make them into little mini punies or roll eggs just stretch and draft it out a little bit before I get started and it means all the fibers aren't running straight up and down they're all crisscrossing over each other so when I do the long draw or as long as I can get it without it getting too uncomfortable I'll end up with a nice woolen wool so that is definitely what I'm going to do today and then I probably will ply it then see what it looks like afterwards so I'll get on with this I'll let you get on with your little story that I'm going to read, another folk story. And I have a little announcement to make. On Christmas Day, but I won't be spinning. I am going to make a wet felted garment out of my Christmas Day bat. But Phil's asked if he can do the story read over. So we might leave it to a public vote. See what you guys think next weekend on my live chat. But if you would like to hear Phil do a folk story over my, um, my Christmas vlog videos and have a, a stand, a debut of Philip, then um, we'll get him to read them. Put a comment down below. Let me know what you think. So I'll see you on the other side and we'll have a quick chat before I let you get on with the rest of your day. Baldor the Bright. Oh, Frigga, the wife of Odin, bore twin sons. One was Hodor. He was dark and silent, as blind as winter. The other was Baldor. He was fair and full of song. His brow was like the day, and he knew magic of the trees and virtues of summer flowers. He lived in Asgard, in a hall of golden pillars thatched with silver. He knew the secret of buds. He knew the secret of the dance of the bees. He knew the heart of the rose. He knew all things but one. He did not know his own fate. There had never been such a light and laughter in Asgard before Baldor came, and the gods loved him, all except Loki whose fame and wit were now like the flames of a fire that are paled by the sun. Loki kept watching Asgard, waiting. What's the matter with Baldor? said Odin one day. Loki heard and came close, but unseen. He looks ill, said Odin. He has had the same bad dream for nights on end, said Frigga, but he can never remember what it is. He wakes up exhausted and sweating and afraid, and I think it's a warning that some harm will be done to him. Harm, said Odin. Wife, we have a son who is the gold of Asgard. No one will hurt him. The streams are bright for his passing by. The sky's blue. 
Only his hair is yellower than the corn that grows in our field since he came to us. But he is pale and ill, said Frigga. I think he may die. He won't. I forbid it. Oh, father, you are strong, but you can't change fate. He will not die. I shall not allow him to die. It's only a dream. So are the Shadowlands, said Frigga, yet they are more real than life. Then I shall ride to the Shadowlands, said Odin. They will tell me there, since they know of all deaths. But it's so far to the land of the dead, a lot could happen while you're gone. Start at once, said Frigga, and I'll do what I can. Baldur must be kept safe. Odin left Asgard and rode for the Shadowlands, and Frigga sent Hermund, the messenger of the gods, to the north, to the south, to the east, to the west, to the whole world, to ask for things to promise that they would not harm Baldur. And this promise was given. Every living creature that walked, swam or flew, crept or slept, every plant that grew and the cold rocks and the sea and the wind of the air, all creation gave this promise to keep Baldur safe from harm, for their love of him. This was the promise that Hermund took back to Asgard and Frigga's heart was at rest. But Loki put on the clothes of an old woman and made his way disguised to Odin's hall. Frigga was sitting by the door. Good day to you, my lady. Good day, old woman. Who are you? Are you a stranger to Asgard? My name is Thok, said Loki. Indeed, indeed, I have come to hear the wonderful news. Is it true that, that they, what they are saying, now, my lady, that the creation has promised not to hurt your fine upstanding son? It is, said Frigga. Baldur is loved by all. Ah, what it is to have a son a mother can be proud of. And is it true what they're saying? Not only bird and beast and fish, but lifeless things. They will not harm my son. Well, well, there's a wonder. It's lucky you are, my lady, a proud day for sure. It is, Thuck, it is. And it is really true, forgive me, my lady, but poor old Thuck's brain can't be doing with such a wonder all at once. My, what is it to be a mother? The whole world won't hurt him, eh? The whole world, not even the smallest things, not even a grain of sand, not a... Well, there is just one thing. Oh, my lady. Well, there's one tiny shoot of mistletoe Herman didn't ask, said Frig Frigga. It was too young to promise anything, such a weak little thing. It's probably dead already. It was growing by the doorpost of the warrior's hall, right where they charge in and out. Those men get drunk every night, and it will have been flattened by now, I suppose. That's a blessing then, my lady. Ah, oh, Baldur's a lucky young man. Loki went straight to the warrior's hall, found the tiny mistletoe shoot among the rubbish by the door, and he took it, and he reared it. He nursed it on black things without a name, on a grave mound earth, and sang evil runes above. And the mistletoe grows straight as death and hard as frost. And when it was the size, Loki cut it and from its wood made an arrow. Odin returned to Asgard. His face was hidden below his dark hood, but he moved as if he carried bad news. Frigga ran out to meet him. Her face was flush and she did not notice Odin's slow tread. Come in, come in. I've so much to tell you. I've been to the Shadowlands, said Oda. Well, sit down and listen, said Frigga. While you've been galloping about doing something useful, everything's all right now. How do you know, said Odin. His voice was stretched with grief. And what is that laughter? There should be no laughter. That's my surprise for you, said Frigga. There should be no laughter. Come look out the window. It's the latest game. See, Baldur stands under the oak and all the gods throw things at him. It's all right. Look, he's not hurt. It doesn't matter that they throw spears or axes or stones or knives. They all bounce off him without hurting him. Isn't he kind and patient, though, to stand there so others can have their fun? What does this mean, said Odin? It takes a mother to look after her son. While you were riding up and down, I made a creation's promise not to hurt Baldur, see? Nothing touches him. He's safe now. He can't be killed. Frigga, Frigga, the tables are laid in the Shadowlands and the coochies and the gold rings. I've seen the dark velvet spread and the mead horn filled with sleep for Baldor. They have made a banquet in the Shadowlands for our son. Let the gods play and it will soon be night. Among the leaves of the green 
holy hold doors stood apart from the merriment. The branches rustled and a voice spoke in his ear. Now what's all this, Hodor? Is it you looking so sad and left out of the sport? You should be enjoying yourself with the others. It's a great thing to know that we'll be having Baldor with us always. Aren't you celebrating? It's Loki, isn't it? said Hodor. Don't worry about me. It's, is it perhaps you're feeling a wee bit jealous of your brother Baldor the Bright? No, said Hodor. I can't help wishing I wasn't blind, that's all. I'm having such a good game over there and I can't share it. You're wishing you could see to throw something at Baldor, eh? said Loki. Yes, said Odo. They say it's marvellous to watch things stop in mid-air or turn around in corners or slow down. He doesn't feel any of it because all creation promised not to hurt him. Even Thor's hammer was gentle. Was it now? Ah, it's a wonderful thing indeed. But look, there's no reason for you to be missing out. There is not. But I can't see. I'll help you, said Loki. Now here's my bow. There, you've got it. That's it. Get a good, good firm grip there. That's it. Oh, you're bending it fine. Try again. That's it. Yes, I can do that. Yeah, I can do that. All right. Of course it is. You're a natural. Now then, here's my very best arrow. Feel how long and straight she is. She's made of a very special wood. Oh, she flies like a bird. She goes where you put her. There's a notch now. That, see there on the string? Her point, yep, there you go, you've got her. Now try her, but don't shoot. Easy, pull back, smooth and gentle. That's my boy, that's it, brilliant. Oh, you're a champion. Let get her, let's her go slowly, slowly, and lower there. Yes, Loki, I can do it. Of course you can. Now I'll turn you in the right direction and aim for you. Baldor will be pleased. He's always trying to make me do things like the others. Good, good, said Loki. Now then, there, like that. Yes. A shade to your left. Now draw right back till you feel the string on your nose. That's it. Lift the point a bit, just a tad more. Now hold, hold steady. Fire. In the cold silence after the scream, Hodor swung his head trying to grasp signs. What? What was that? What's happened? He said. Loki's voice answered him, but now with a distance in space and heart. I'm afraid, my dear. It looks like you've just killed your brother. The gods took Baldor and laid him in Ringhorn, his own dragon ship. They built his funeral pyre about him and brought garlands of flowers and jewels and precious work. They put his winged helmet on his head and his sword between his hands. Then they set fire to the sweet pine branch. They sent Rincon westward over the sea, stood watching until the last flame of its burning faded from the sky. Their hearts broke, and on the stark shore it was night. Baldur, come back! Frigga said Odin, our son is dead. She stood in the foam of the water's edge. I won't let him be dead. I won't let him. I won't. We can't change fate, said Odin. I can. Hermond. Herman, you're quick, you're brave, you're strong. Herman, stride to the Shadowlands now and bring him back. Bring back my son, bring Baldor. But my lady, said Herman, it's grief. Go to the Queen of the Shadowlands. Ask her, ask Hela to bring me back my son. My lady, Hela does not give up her prey. Baldor's dead, my lady. It's Odin's wife to bow to Hela. Bring back my son. So Herman rode for Hela's land. He rode down the Asperu, the coloured bridge of fire and water and air that spans the sky, down into the Shadowlands of North. Nine days and nights he rode without stopping before he crossed the boundary, a bridge of crystal arched with gold, hung on a single hair. He rode through the wood with the trees and the leaves of iron, through the dark and the cold and the mists over a river of naked swords till he came to the hall of queen of the shadowlands and the name of her hall was misery but herman was not afraid to give his message and all night he had plead long pleaded with hella to let baldur go free to asgard so frigga weeps said hella and if i listen to every mother's prayer it's not just Frigga that wants her son back, said Hermund. We all want Baldor to come back. The whole world grieves for him. Oh, mothers weep. My music is their tears, said Hela. Let me bring music, 
said Baldor, and set Baldor free. What do you mean? Yes, yes, that would be a joy. The whole world's in tears. All creation sing for me. Yes, you shall have Baldor. Then if all things weep for him, yes, but if one does not, I will keep him fast. Then he rode back to Hermund from Hellas Hall and then through the world to the north, to the south, to the east, to the west to ask all things to weep for Baldor. And this was given, every living creature that walked, swam, flew, crept or slept, every plant that grew, and the cold rocks and the sea and the winds of the air, all creation wept for dead Baldor. Herman rode for Asgard through their tears, but when he was close to Asgard's walls, he passed a cave mouth. Deep in the cave he saw something move, something black and dull, red eyes like coal. The cave was silent. Who's there? he said. An old woman said a voice then weep all things weep for baldor i don't he's dead he will come back to asgard if all creation drops tears for him he'll not come back for me but he'll bring light and joy and meadow laughter i don't know them and i don't need them what are you if you will not weep said herman the voice answered him slow and chanting i am thok i weep dry tears he gave me no gladness let Hela keep her prey. And so through the malice of Loki, the tears of the world were lost and Baldor was seen in Asgard no more. From this time the glory of Asgard began to fade. Blind Hodor was killed in vengeance and Loki was caught and chained deep under the earth. But the gods could not be saved. Baldor was gone and blood had been shed. Murder grew from murder and grief from grief and from these came war. A sword age, a wolf age, a winter and the world's end.
Okay, so there we go. My yarn snapped off with my cake, so I was doing so well doing a wool and spun snap, Navajo ply, emergency spin up. Fine, because I'm going to be weaving this, so I don't need it to be absolutely perfect. You will see on the end picture of this video the proper colours that you can see in this yarn, but you can sort of see the little hints of green coming through. Um, and there is pots of reds and things like that from the sari silk. So just a quick short video today, hopefully it's not too long, um, and a story, obviously. So I'm going to go and pop off now, go and make some dinner, and then try and get some work ahead before Monday kicks in. So there we go. That is marjoram on Grey Shetland with viscose bamboo and tussa silk and sari silk and Angelina. You take care, have a lovely day, and I shall see you tomorrow, day 14.